So Andrew here from Home Theatre Engineering again. Today we're talking about the Mad VR. Now we did the unboxing video a while ago, but I really want to talk about this product a bit more because for me it's one of the most exciting products that's entered our industry and the home theatre uh, game, I guess, uh, overall. This is a stunning piece of equipment and the more I know about it, the more I love it. We have two primary menus. You have the um, main menu, uh, which is your configuration and setup, and we can walk through that. It has options for calibration, for gamma, for the uh, color space. Um, we have all sorts of screen configurations. The screen configuration is really, really neat. What you do is you zoom your image out until it fits your screen, and then you go through a mode where you actually run an assistant. So if we have a look at this, this assistant then measures out the exact area of your screen and from then on can actually um, adjust your aspect ratios exactly to fit your screen and it works perfectly and it works instantly. All right, um, we have some black bar detection and that does a similar thing with the black bars and we have a custom zoom configuration and your HDMI configuration as well. The other cool thing is on a button press, I've got all of the incoming signal information here. So on this one, I can see it's 3840, it's 23.976 frame rate. Um, I can see the pixel format, what HDCP version and so on and so forth. What's the incoming colorimetry signal? Um, I can even have a look at the uh, HDR metadata. Um, and then I've got outgoing signal information as well. Now we flick this to 25 frames a second because we're shooting video, which is very convenient for us. Uh, and that's the actual display information. Uh, moving on from that one, uh, we then have our own user custom menu, and here we can just tune things to the way we like them. HDR settings, deinterlacing and motion, artifact removal, upscale and sharpening, incoming video overrides, image adjustments, and this is the one I want to talk about right now. This is custom zoom, and we'll get to that in a bit. Uh, now I've turned that off and the reason I have, and we'll show you right now, is because of this. Let's play this video. This is Interstellar and thank you Mr. Nolan. What he's done is, amongst other people, he has created films that have changing aspect ratios. Now, I don't really understand why because we've all either got a TV or we've got a scope screen. And he jumps from 16 by 9 or IMAX back to um, CinemaScope and so on and so forth. So at the moment, this scene is in 16 by 9. We'll just hit play. All right, so we're in 16 by 9 at the moment, and then you'll see it will jump to full widescreen, and then back to 16 by 9 uh, repeatedly. So there we go, that's 235, and we're back to uh, 16 by 9. And we can notice up here that as it changes, that will shift. Um, from uh, active to non-active when I reactivate that menu. All right, so at the moment, um, this is jumping between 16 by nine and 235, and it's doing it instantly. That's the first big advantage of this product, because in the past, what you had to do if you had a Sony or whatever, you had to zoom your image up over the screen, and as it changed to 16 by nine, then your picture would push off the screen and it'll look terrible, or if you're going the other way around, your 235 would look tiny. It was just a massive pain, basically. But what this does is the uh, MadVR is detecting that change and instantly managing the aspect ratio switch fitted perfectly to our screen. But it has one more trick up its sleeve. I'm just going to go back and start that chapter again. And then I'm going to pause it. And then we're going to turn this feature on. Um, so, uh, active mapping, yes. All right, now look what's happened here. The MadVR also has built into it nonlinear stretch. And so what we can do is we can actually activate that nonlinear stretch and we can adjust this to suit, but then that gets added to the automatic aspect ratio frame change. So I'll get rid of that menu. Let's play this sequence again. Right, now what we're seeing is 235, and as we know, this scene frequently changes from 235 to 16 by 9. And it's doing it now, but you're not seeing it. And it's doing it because each time it goes to 16 by 9, it's then applying its non-linear stretch, and it's happening absolutely instantly. It is imperceptible. 
And this means now that we can now watch our movies with our changing aspect ratios without any problem whatsoever. It's just phenomenal. It's the most exciting thing I think I've seen in home theatre for a very, very long time. And it's been really irritating, to be honest, trying to work out exactly how we should best manage this. We even did a video on it a while ago on how to manage these changing aspect ratios using an anamorphic lens. And either way, you end up losing something. Well, here, you lose nothing, absolutely nothing. You've got 100% of the picture, 100% of the image, all the time. Okay, so that's probably the neatest trick that this piece of equipment has to offer, but it's got way more than that. Of course, out of the box, this thing is a dynamic tone mapper, right? So what it does is, of course, our videos are shot in, in 4K, UHD, HDR, and um, they are designed to um, produce uh, an output between well, up to 10,000 nits, and movies are mastered in 1,000, 2,000, or 4,000 nits. So this has to manage that, and on a projector, we've only got about 100 nits. Well, unless you've got a room like this, we've got quite a few more nits than that at the moment. But um, what the uh, Mad VR does is it then maps that massive range of light output into that smaller range of that 100 nits that you've got on your projector and gives you an amazing picture. So that's its really its primary trick that's what it was built to do but this incredible aspect ratio switching is is revolutionary you know it's completely changed cinema watching for me and for anyone who can afford to get a mad vr this solves all of your problems now the other things that this does if you've got a an anamorphic lens sometimes you get some barrel distortion with that you can remap the barrel distortion with this um, there is so much that this unit does but the impressive thing is how fast it does it. It's just screamingly quick, so quick that we can't actually tell when those scene changes are taking, taking place. So in case you're doubting all of that, we'll go back one more time. Um, let's see, there we go. I'm gonna go back to the beginning of that chapter again. <laughs> right, and you'll see this changing from no to yes, as I talked about a little while ago. So at the moment, the custom zoom is active, yes. No, so we're back to 235, then back to 16 by 9 with anamorphic stretch, back off to 235, and so on and so forth. And it's happening without you even seeing it. This is an amazing piece of equipment, and if you've got the money, you know, it would be great if this was $50 and everyone in the world could have it. It's not, it's expensive, but when you understand the processing power, the grunt, the graphics card, and the software that's required to actually make this happen, then this thing is a thing of beauty, all right? So it's up there with the Trinov, it's one of those high-end pieces of gear, but honestly, if you can get your hands on one, get one. It's gonna be the best step you'll ever take in your home theater video watching. And, uh, you know, I, I can sit here all day and watch this thing, it's just gobsmacking. Okay, but what about Lumigen, you ask? That's a fair question, so let's take a look at this. Lumigen Auto Aspect Ratio uses three detection methods, HDMI and image, image, and HDMI. At the moment, we're looking at the Lumigen using both HDMI and image to determine the aspect ratio change, which it does. Unfortunately, it takes time. So what we're seeing here is it has, the image has gone to scope, but it's still sitting within the 16 by nine area. So it hasn't actually made any change at all. And it's waiting to do the math or to go through whatever process it needs to go to and there we just saw it finally process for long enough to switch to 240. Okay so what we're going to do is back into the menu again and then we will change this setting to process it um, just with image and see if that makes any difference at all to the auto aspect ratio switching. Now whilst we're doing that one of the things that does bug me about the Lumgen is the software updates. Uh, on, on the Mad VR, you just uh, click on update, it takes about 20 seconds and it's done over the net. On the Lumigen, it actually takes some time. You have to connect to your laptop to it, you have to download the software, you have to get the board rate and the COM ports right, then you have to load the software and, and, and that sort of thing. It's a bit of a pain. Okay, so here we are at image now. We've got 240 image, 16 by 9, and let's see what happens. Now, we're still in the 16 by 9 format with the 2.4 image. Uh, windowed in the middle. It hasn't had time to process that and then to uh, map it or scale it 
back to the full size on the screen, and it's still doing that. So 2.40 there, sitting in the middle of the screen, it just hasn't been able to do that. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go and have a look at the third option on the Lumigen for changing this aspect ratio, and that option is just HDMI, and see if that actually uh, can change or speed up the process at all. Okay, we're on HDMI now, so here we go again. So 16 by 9, and then 2.40, but again, windowed in the middle of the screen, 16 by 9, 2.40, windowed in the middle of the screen, 16 by 9, 2.40, windowed in the middle of the screen. So what's happening in all of these functions is the Lumigen uh, is taking a long, long time to detect the changes, and it needs long enough. So there you go. What we're going to do now is go back to the Mad VR. So this is Mad VR Auto Aspect Ratio. You can see the menu on the screen, and you can see the menu showing the, the detected changes. So this is with nonlinear stretch active and menu. So you're seeing the whole lot happening at the moment and you're actually seeing it indicate the changes as you see the menu flashing up its various presets on the left-hand top corner. All right, so what you're seeing on the screen is no change. We'll go back to that without the menu for you to have a look at a little bit later on. So that's with nonlinear stretch active, okay? So what we'll do now is we'll take a look at it uh, without the menu. So here we go, 16 by 9, 235, 16 by 9, sorry, 240, sorry, um, and 16 by 9 again. Okay, and finally, once more, without the menu, this is uh, auto aspect ratio, nonlinear stretch on, nothing sort of uh, obscuring the vision, and a seamless um, transition from um, 16 by 9, 240, but uh, applying the nonlinear stretch in the 16 by 9 mode, and off you go. Now, I would say here, I haven't finished tweaking the nonlinear stretch. You can adjust this any way you want until you get the image looking absolutely perfect without any kind of distortion. So, you know, that's important to note. And we watch sports on it and all sorts of movies, and it just looks absolutely fantastic. But the Mad VR is not only detecting the changes, but when it sees a 16 by 9 within a scope image, it then applies a nonlinear stretch if you tell it to, and you can sit and watch your movies without any changes and absolutely no losses whatsoever. It's absolutely fantastic. Um, so there you go. Uh, it's something I truly love. I must admit, um, you know, you can go either way. If you're a purist, you just watch the, the format change, and if you just want to see it big, well, then you leave your nonlinear stretch on, okay? So I hope that's given you a little more information on the Mad VR. We love it. If you're interested, obviously get in touch and we, we could talk about this thing all day. All right, thanks. And please don't forget, like, subscribe, and do get in touch if you're looking at getting a cinema built and we can guide you through that process. We'll see you again soon.